Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. on Monday, April 3rd. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Becker? Here. Flaherty? Here. Pena Graham? Here. Stoker? Here. Wright? Here. Maxwell? Vice Chair McMahon? Here. Six present. All right, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. At this point of the meeting, I'm going to ask for an approval of the agenda. If there are any additions or deletions or an approval that can be made. I uh, move to approve as submitted. We have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted by O'Flaherty. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Reich. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, the agenda passes. The next part of this meeting, I have to ask for an approval on the minutes from the last meeting. So does somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes as, accept, as presented from the last meeting? So moved. We have a motion from Becker. Second. Second by Stoker. All in, provers, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, the minutes are approved. What we have on the agenda tonight, this is the public participation portion of the meeting. Is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak to a matter that is not on the agenda for tonight? If so, and it's not on the agenda, this is your time to come to the podium now, state your name and address for the record, and address the Zoning Commission. Seeing none, I'm going to open up the public hearing that's on our agenda. The first item of uh, new business we have is a public hearing. So I'm going to open up a public hearing at 6.01 on Monday, April 3rd. And the public hearing tonight is a petition by the Pappas Glasgow Development LLC, represented by John Pappas, for the approval of the rezoning of the site at 2239 Sycamore Road from the SFR1, that's Single Family Residential District, to the PDC, Planned Development Commercial District, in order to accommodate a tent rental showroom, offices, and warehouse in the existing commercial building on the subject site and approval of waivers to the Unified Development Ordinance. Is a report from someone in the audience who wants to address? If you can come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Hello, Pote Pappas, 3 Fairway Circle, DeKalb. Here to speak about the property today. Uh, what we're proposing here um, is a warehouse that was originally built in the 60s. It uh, remained as a warehouse, as a furniture location for quite some years. Then in the 90s was bought by Northern, remained as an art annex warehouse. Also, I guess there were students working in and out of the space. Place uh, felt in a little bit of disrepair, so they put it up for sale uh, about a year and a half ago. We purchased the property um, since then. We made a substantial amount of improvements, about a couple hundred thousand, in just upgrading LED, roof repairs. Um, I, there was a lot of, lot of issues with this building. Uh, removed a lot of insulation that had, uh, had gotten damaged, mold, uh, certain things like that. And uh, now we're looking to uh, get this back onto the actual zoning it's been operating under for the last 50 years which is um, the same zoning as the surrounding areas. We don't plan on adding any additional space to the property. Um, the only thing we're really looking to do here is improve the current condition of the property and get a high class tenant who's here today, Adam Curtis with uh, Midwest Tents and Events to take over the space and uh, continue its use. I'm here to answer any questions. There's some pictures here on the slide showing some of the improvements and uh, pending approval today and then city council. Uh, we're gonna push forward with additional improvements as far as upgrading uh, the exterior to accommodate ADA and uh, various other items. All right, thank you, Fody. Thank you. The city staff have a presentation for us? Yes, um, as uh, Fody mentioned, uh, 
Uh, development we received was a rezoning request for 2239 uh, Sycamore Road. Uh, already mentioned a little bit of the history. Uh, built in, uh, you see the subject site there, located behind the Elwood Steak and Fish House. Structure was built in 1969. Um, the applicant would like to rezone it to single family residential, or from single family to planned development commercial. Um, it was unincorporated for many years. In 2010, the city annexed the property, forced to annex it, along with some other properties throughout the city that were kind of doing that. And uh, as you know, the, any property annexed in the city is automatically zoned single family residential. So that's SFR1. It was zoned that way and they just kept it that way. So in NIU, purchased it in 1996. It was a warehouse before for a furniture store. And uh, it was a NIU art annex building. Um, the applicant purchased the property in February 2022, a little over a year ago. Uh, NIU decided to sell the building due to its uh, poor condition and distance from the campus. So uh, Fody mentioned some of the work that's been going on inside the, uh, the building, there's the exterior uh, facing Sycamore Road. But a lot of work has been done inside the uh, building. That's a picture uh, during the cleanup, I guess. Um, but it looks currently like this now. So a lot of work's been done, cleaned out, uh, $200,000 worth of improvements done to it, um, and a proposed uh, tent rental business, Midwest Tent and Vents, would like to go in there. Um, the building will not be expanded. Uh, it will stay the same size. There is, uh, applicant mentioned some possible improvement to the front of the or the dry parking area to get a little better uh, radius uh, for the loading dock a little bit here may come in the future but no, no building addition no improvements around the building or anything uh, there is a parking lot already there 35 spaces uh, it's anticipated there be about uh, eight required parking spaces that's a number of employees on the maximum shift Midwest tent does have some trailers some trucks will be parked in front there, um, so there's adequate parking. Uh, the floor plan was submitted. Fody mentioned a little bit about that. Uh, there'll be uh, eight to nine offices, two bathrooms, approximately uh, 1,100 square feet of a showroom, and the rest will be the warehouse, or about 66% of the total floor area. So rezoning the site to PDC was uh, uh, thought to be the best solution. Uh, where we could uh, get some control over the uses there and accommodate those and also a few waivers that were needed. Uh, there's GC and PD zoning uh, to the north, east and south of the site and along all along Sycamore Road. So it fits into that uh, zoning very well. There's residential zoning to the west with a bypass and a single family development uh, further west. The Briefly about the waivers, uh, it's a planned development under two acres where it's 1.96 on this barely under. We've approved that waiver several times before. There's a 50 foot uh, buffer between uh, in the PDC district between non residential use and any adjacent residential district. So uh, that's needed. The building's about 17 feet from the bike path uh, property, which is zoned residential, and about 330 feet from to the um, nearest home on Greenwood Court, 818 Greenwood Court. I have an area up here. So from the building, then where it says subject site to the closest home, it's kind of hard to see with all the trees there, but about 330 feet to that home owned by Mr. Nyquist, which is here, and I will be speaking probably in a few minutes. Um, the uh, also uh, there's a setback issue with the 50 foot, of course, uh, but that's being reduced. Again, the building's not being expanded, so it'll stay as is. And the percent showroom uh, in the PDC or in the GC district, there's a maximum of 50 percent. They're going to be at about 66 percent warehouse. So, little change there. Uh, we have the findings of fact for rezoning, which we have in every uh, rezoning request. Uh, the comp plan, which we approved last year, calls for high density residential and commercial, kind of a two uses or one or the other. So this would be commercial use meets the comp plan. Uh, proposed zoning uh, matches the existing zoning north, east, and south of the site. 
which is uh, PDC and GC's uh, zoning. Um, the, so the zoning fits in the area. It's compatible with the surrounding area. The use has been there for some time. They're not expanding it, so uh, the very little impact on the surrounding area. There's adequate parking, access provided to Sycamore Road through an easement, uh, so there's, uh, that drive will accommodate any traffic generated by this, this use. Obviously, Sycamore Road is uh, adequate for any additional traffic that will be generated. Uh, utilities on the site, uh, they will be extending a water line that's behind the fish and steakhouse to the building. It's currently on a well. Uh, they're hooked up already to public sanitary at this time. There's adequate parking, as I mentioned, um, so they meet all the findings of fact. We did receive one letter from um, Keith and Patricia Nyquist of 18 Greenwood Court, which is shown there uh, by their name on that lot. Um, there was a letter submitted with some questions and I responded to them. The, those are in your packet. I'll just summarize here. Uh, Mr. Nyquist asked about the proposed zoning to BDC. Is it intended to make the business, uh, you know, this the tent sales or what else is proposed? The way the uh, motion is set up and the conditions, um, it's going to permit warehouse, wholesale establishments, distribution centers. So if the tent uh, rental place ever leaves, another warehouse similar type use could go in there without any type of zoning change. And of course, any accessory use offices, showrooms would be included. What's prohibited would be uh, like storage of hazardous substances, any manufacturing or assembly of goods. So if some use came in that did that, that would not be permitted. They would have to amend the ordinance that was approved and there'd be a public hearing again, notification to surrounding owners like we've done now would have to occur. Uh, no outside storage of materials would be allowed, so if somebody wanted to do that, they'd have to amend the ordinance, have a hearing, go through the process. So those are the conditions that we're recommending. Uh, Mr. Nyquist also asked about the, uh, if expand the building or any, uh, um, are they gonna be closer to the nature trail? As mentioned, there's no improvement to the building in terms of the exterior footprint, this uh, internal mostly. No additional lighting in the back. Uh, uh, there'll be a dumpster that is required for every commercial property that will be in the front and will have to be screened. Um, it was discussed about the impact in the surrounding area. And uh, last question was about asking about mixed use retail or any type of uh, residential building or a hotel. That would not be allowed. They'd have to come back and amend the ordinance, go through a hearing. So. Um, that's the only public comment and writing that we did receive. Um, so staff thinks this is a good uh, reuse of the building. Uh, a lot of work's gone into it. Um, it fits into the area. Uh, they meet all the findings of fact, so we'd recommend approval. There's a sample motion prepared that approves the uh, plat of survey since there's no build new building done, there's no preliminary plan. So we'll just approve the exhibit A, which is a plat of survey. The standards in Exhibit B, which I went over, and then Exhibit C is a floor area which shows the amount of showroom they have. So um, if there's any questions, I'll certainly be ha happy to answer those. All right, thank you, Dan. At this point, I think we have some people in the public that wanna speak on this. I have three speaker request forms. The first is from Mr. Keith Nyquist. If you'd like to come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Keith Nyquist, 18 Greenwood Court. <clears throat> uh, I think this is the fourth time I've come before this board in the last year uh, to discuss the subject property, and I thank you for your time. I know that serving on a commission like this is a lot of work, and so, um, generally speaking, um, absolutely, I think that we would support anything that would bring some economic development to the community. Uh, there's no reason to oppose that, and um, based on the findings of fact that have been presented so far today. Um, still cannot find a reason necessarily to oppose this, but um, I do have some questions if, if for the petitioner or for the for whomever it, the question might be relevant for. Okay. Um, <clears throat> first, um, I guess uh, it would relate to the hours of operation and the way that the garbage disposal works with that. Um, 
over the past 10 years, uh, there has been, um, had many, many communications with the city. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission uh, with previous members and uh, even T.J. Moore when he was the Public Works Director. Um, that whole area there, the subject site and the businesses around that, um, there's a commercial garbage disposal contract that um, governs the pickup of that. They pick up the garbage at 5 in the morning on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, and um, that makes sleep difficult. And uh, matter of fact, I've been in communication with Bill Nicholas about this, and um, it seems to be that it's not the will of the council to do anything about that. And I'm wondering if there's anything that the private interests who plan to expand the business here uh, would have any interest in a, a, in a exercise of goodwill and to at least make the garbage pickup consistent with the times that uh, other residents in the city enjoy. I know it's generally seven o'clock is the rule, uh, but five o'clock in the winter when it's, you know, <laughs> you're awakened by um, 20 minutes of thuds of dumpsters after dumpster after dumpster is an issue. Um, the other question I have is uh, regarding the use of lighting around the property. Um, right now, we think that the, right of the, the lighting on the property is reasonable, um, but based on some of the trends of, of certainly the property just to the north of that, and I'm talking about the Michaels and that whole retail thing, um, it's become impossible for us to sleep at night without closing the drapes because we have to because the entire house is bathed with blue light from the LEDs. Um, a couple hundred dollars worth of shielding would allow the property owners to enjoy the benefits of having the security of the light, which, which I'm sure that they need to have, and would also, again, allow us to sort of maintain a quality of life that we'd be able to sleep at night without having to close the drapes. Um, and then the, <clears throat> so I guess that's my second concern, is what, what are the plans to expand the lighting um, availability, especially in the back? And then um, if you look at the, at the image there on the screen, you'll see on the north side of the building, you can't really tell, but there's a, a series of about eight or nine um, mature trees that were on the, that still are on the property of uh, the county forest preserve, clearly on the county property, and a lot of those were just topped off. Um, so I, I know they were not on the on private property, they were public property is topped off. As far as I know from my communication, limited communication with the Forest Preserve, they were not aware of and to my knowledge did not approve of this. Um, but what's done is done. Uh, my question is about the trees and whatnot on the west side of the property that are there. Um, are there any plans to remove those? Um, they're, again, part of, a, I think, a larger quality of life issue that, that I think is relevant and worthwhile. So. Um, those questions notwithstanding, again, I think generally speaking, we would support anything that would be a reasonable and productive expansion of, of uh, the business space in the city of DeKalb. So thanks for your time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Nyquist. Do you want to address those issues yeah, first? Yeah, just, uh, just go through them and uh, Fody or okay. yeah. Fody, myself go ahead and address, address those. Them. So as far as lighting goes, we're not adding any additional light. The only okay. thing we would do is change any wall packs to LED. Um, we are not cutting uh, any trees in the proposed area. Um, as far as garbage pickup, the garbage companies tend to make you sign contracts this long and tend to be a little difficult to deal with. We'll do everything in our power to ask them to push that time out. But uh, especially being a single use tenant, I can't imagine there's more than once a week pickup almost like anybody that owns a residential home, right? You get your garbage picked up, and that makes them sound. You know, you can't tell the neighbor not to pick the garbage up. Uh, but that will be very limited given uh, a single-use tenant. Any other questions that? I think about uh, the hours of operation. Oh, so we got that. Hours of operation. Hours of operation. Uh, Adam here, who is the president and owner of the company, can speak to that. but. My understanding is that these are not late hour business that causes noise or disturbance or traffic after any reasonable hour. Adam, do you know your, you have stated hours? Uh, yes, sir. Adam, if you could go up to the mic, yes. Up to the podium, state your name and address. 
Adam Curtis, 308 East Sunset Place. Thank you. Our current hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That would be the time when public could come to the showroom and the office. Uh, we may operate outside of those hours within the building. Uh, occasionally we do have events which would require us to, mm -hmm. you know, leave at, could be any hour of the day or night. Um, but that would be a matter of, you know, pulling a vehicle out of the parking lot and getting on the highway. There should be uh, no reason for intensive operations to happen outside of normal business hours. Right. Uh, as far as the trash goes, I, sheer pain, I live two doors down from Lincoln Elementary, where they do also pick up the trash at 5 a.m. If there's something we can do to request pickup to be at a different time, I would certainly do that. But, you know, not being a trash company, I, I couldn't guarantee or promise that it would happen during normal business hours. Uh, we would anticipate only one pickup a week. All right. Thank you very much. The next speaker request form I have is from a David Cleary. Yep. David Cleary, if you come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and tell us your concerns. My name is Dave McClurry. My address is 12 Greenwood Court, so I am Keith's neighbor. A um, couple of things that I'd like to address. I, I think it's uh, a, a, a terrific thing that, you know, we're trying to do everything is as a municipality to bring business in and support it. Um, it's, uh, it's a necessary element of uh, what happens within our town. Uh, but uh, as I said in the last time I addressed this uh, group, uh, there has to be some balance in things. Um, I certainly don't see anything here, as Keith has said, that would be terribly out of balance with things, but the point that I would make is that I, I have now lived at 12 Greenwood Court for 33 years. And in that 33 years, we've seen um, a huge amount of change in terms of just the, uh, the noise, the light, the amount of traffic uh, that happens. Um, what has happened since that area has been developed is that people are now avoiding Sycamore Road. They come down uh, on Greenwood. Mm -hmm. uh, now why they do that I'm not sure because in reality it's not going to save them any time because one way or another they're going to hit lights and they're going to hit areas where the speed limit is a little bit different. Um, unfortunately, um, we don't seem to be able to control people going through our area at reasonable speeds. That's one thing. We have a, a great deal more traffic. That means a great deal more noise. Uh, we have a lot of bikers now who are enjoying, again, not coming through uh, Sycamore Road, but coming through and, and going down Greenwood. So we have that issue. Um, the noise issues are, are kind of interesting. I mean, Keith has mentioned the, uh, the dumpster noise. Um, uh, over the last number of days, and I, I travel a lot, but my office is in my home. So I get to hear this you know, 24 seven when I'm at home and working out of my office. And um, over the last number of months, I've noticed that there is a business, and I have yet to identify who the business is, who has a, uh, an exterior speaker that any time they get a call, mm -hmm. it's being broadcast over the speaker. So, you know, throughout the time that they are not in their business, it's just ringing and ringing and ringing, and this is constant, and I can hear it all day long, all night long. Um, I you know, sometimes wonder whether they're taking the time to answer their phones or not. Um, so we, we have this sort of growing list of issues over time. And this is, uh, this is the, the challenge of, of growth of any kind. Because you know, a, a little bit here, a little bit there, and then all of a sudden, well, 30 years later, not all of a sudden, but uh, things have changed rather dramatically. So I, I would just ask, 
uh, Mr. Pappas and, and anyone who is uh, coming in to rent that space to be aware of the fact that um, you have neighbors around. We want to support those businesses. We want them to do well. Um, but we want to live together in relative harmony. Um, and, you know, one of the things, for example, uh, in, any, in any business, uh, especially if you're working late at night and if you're, you know, loading trucks or if you're assembling things, uh, I would just ask that, you know, you be aware of is this generating noise that then goes outside of, of the property, outside of the building and into the surrounding area. Um, because it's, uh, it, it is getting to a point, I mean, we, we used to be able to, you know, go out at night and it would be completely dark. Uh, it's no longer like that. Um, we can go outside, but it's, it's definitely, we have light pollution, we have noise pollution, we have all of these other things. So, in any event, thank you for, you know, bringing good businesses in. Uh, you have a lot of spaces to fill <laughs> in, in our community, so I know there's going to be a lot more that's going to be done, but let's just make sure that over time, we're doing things to make sure that we can live together. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I don't think there's much that the FODI or the tenant can address about the traffic, but I think you'd be well served to go to the city council meeting. Mayor Barnes, who lives around the corner, is going to crack down on speeders from what he says. That's good to let him know that maybe Greenwood Acres could use the spot there. I have a third uh, speaker request form from Mr. James Hovis. If you could come to the podium and state your name and address for the record and tell us your concerns. My name is Jim Hovis, and I manage leases at uh, DeKalb by Industrial Park. And Fody uh, started by saying that uh, they have an area where they want a high-class tenant, and I want everybody to know here that Adam is a high-class tenant, and he's going with the high-class developers, too. So it's just awesome, and I, I congratulate Adam on the growth he's had. And I want to assure the people in the community and the council that uh, there's never been neighborhood noise. Uh, he's less than 100 yards from the nearest house in our location. And there's never been noise at night. There's never been a complaint. We have complainers in our neighborhood. They complain about trucks driving on 7th Street, which is commercial. But there's never been a complaint about anything that's happened on this property. Very good. So Adam has done a wonderful job running his business. And I, want to, I want to support him on, on his growth and congratulate him. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jim. All right. Those are the three speaker request forms I have. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion hearing of this meeting at 6.24 p.m. I'm going to open it up uh, for the commission to ask questions. Does anybody from the commission have any questions for staff or the applicant? Before this was, uh, uh, when Northern owned the property, what was his own? Was his own single family? Northern bought it in 96. Uh, um, it was unincorporated. I don't know if it was zoned commercial or I assume so, since it was a commercial use. And then the city annexed it in 2010. So um, I assume it was some type of commercial zoning and unincorporated DeKalb County. And then you got it. So, all right. All right. how much of the property uh, is the the black line that we see on the map? There is yeah. that the um, is that the boundary for yes, the property? Yes, that's a boundary itself. of the property. Okay, Get my cursor. Mm -hmm. All right, and and let's say they wanted to uh, expand their parking into some of that green area in the boundary. Is that? Uh, yeah, they're talking about just uh, adding a little bit more radius to so semis can. Uh, there's loading docks right here to get the right radius to back up. So they probably be adding a little 
maybe Fody can describe what they want to do, but just a little more area to get the turning radius so trucks can back up. But, um, you know, if any building, we're, part of the recommendation is prove the site with the uh, survey, which shows the building. So if there's any planned addition to the building pretty much anywhere, that would probably require an amendment to the ordinance and a new public hearing. Um, but if they're just adding some additional parking in the front, it's kind of a judgment call, but they will be adding, the only plan improvement is a little bit of green space will be lost with a little additional pavement in this area. Is that correct, Fody? Yeah. That's what you're planning. Okay. I wanted to ask, um, uh, you currently have this business somewhere, right? And how much space do you have currently? South 7th Street mm -hmm. at the DeKalb 88 uh, Business Park, and we currently occupy about 16,000 square feet there. All right. All right. Are you going to occupy the whole amount of this space, Adam? Yes, we are. And how many square feet is this now? 30,000. Oh, okay. So it'll give us plenty of opportunity to expand and grow. Will you create some jobs? More uh, jobs coming? That's our intent. Yes, that's sir. That's always good. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Um, I, I have a comment. Um, I think one of the most important things as a commission that we have responsibility for is to make sure that as we look at growth, commercial, industrial, residential, that it works together. Um, you know, that in areas like this where there is an encroachment of commercial on residential, that the commercial tenants act in good faith and as good neighbors to the residential partners. Um, DeKalb's not a large city, and so we see this, and we're gonna see more and more of this, and I think it's our responsibility as a commission to make sure that as we see this, we, we review it from the perspective of how would we feel. Um, so, I'm really pleased to hear that you've been a good and responsible tenant, and I am hopeful that upon approval, you'll be a good neighbor to people who have come forward in support, but with concerns, and I think those are legitimate, and I know they'd appreciate you know, your um, willingness to work with them as a neighbor. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right. Does anybody want to make a motion on this issue? I can make the motion. Based upon the submitted petition and testimony presented, I move the Planning and Zoning Commission forward its findings of fact and recommend to the City Council approval of the rezoning of subject site at 2239 Sycamore Road from SFR1 Single Family Residential District to the PDC Planned Developmental, plan Development Commercial District per the plat of survey dated 2-11-22 attached as Exhibit A. The standards in Exhibit B and the floor plan dated 3-18-23 attached as Exhibit C with the condition the building shall be connected to the city water supply prior to issuance of a temporary occupancy permit. All right, we have a motion on the floor from Stoker. Is there a second? I second. We have a second from O'Flaherty. Clerk, can you please, is there any discussion on this issue before we vote? Seeing no discussion. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Becker? Yes. O'Flaherty? Yes. Pena Graham? Yes. Stoker? Yes. Wright? Yes. McMahon? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. All right. Wish you guys the best of luck. Yeah, congrats. All right. Well, that's it we have for new bidders. Is, uh, last thing on the menu is uh, reports. Dan, do you have any reports for us? Yeah, just briefly uh, on your desk was the uh, zoning map that was approved by the City Council March 13th. That's an, an annual approval, so we just copied the commission on that and also provided the memo showing the past uh, zoning changes in the last year. So uh, the copies on the, it's kind of hard to see, of course, but the copies on our website for that, but that's an annual update they do. Uh, coming up, next meeting will be April 17th. We have one hearing 
That's a variance for uh, on Basswood Lane. That's in the far northwest part of the city. Uh, single family home. They want to expand their driveway, uh, exceeding the maximum allowed. So uh, there's a variance for that. And uh, that's the only hearing at that stage. But uh, there's other projects that have been uh, submitted. We're kind of waiting for things on them. So there's quite a few in the queue that, that will be uh, coming up on hearings. So I anticipate pretty busy May and June and July for uh, the commission. So. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Dan. All right. Is there anybody from the commission that has anything they want to report? Seeing none, I'm going to ask for an adjournment motion. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn <laughs> by right. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Becker. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.